You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and happy Monday, and welcome to episode number 358. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. We really do appreciate it. Every single day, we appreciate it. We do. We love hearing your questions. If you have a question, go to askdroneyou.com. Upload that question. We would love to hear from you today. And you're going to love this podcast if you're new to drones, whether you have just started flying, you're thinking about buying a drone, but you're worried that you may crash. How can you get over that and move into the big drones without actually crashing them? Well, that's really the topic of today's question which is brought to you by Legal Flyer. Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 333 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27, which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the app store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. Hey guys, it's Alan calling from Phoenix, Arizona, the land of the sun. I had a quick question. What do you guys think of getting a small drone, like a Hubson or a SEMA or something, for practicing, flying around the house, chasing my dog, chasing my kids, just to get more stick time? Or do you think a simulator would be better? Just thoughts. Uh, love your sh- So uh, what drone do you chase your kids with, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> An Inspire. Wow. Yeah. I would be fearful. They <laughs> that escalated quickly. Keeps them in line. <laughs> No. Is this how you like keep an eye on them when they're out playing in the neighborhood? You That's just, right. Like, you go out for a quick flight and take off from the deck so they can't see you? That's right. Them and all the kids. Got to make sure everybody's being good. Do you have like like deport, like deport detachable leashes that go in and like grab them and walk them home? <laughs> no, that's a really good idea. <laughs> There's um, too many of them to not have some <laughs> resource like that deployed. You may need an M600 for that. But yeah, uh, anyway, cool. Alan, thank you for the question. Uh, you know, he said Phoenix, land of the sun. I don't know. I, I think Albuquerque and New Mexico. I know it's not as hot, but I feel like we get more sun than really? s- parts of Arizona. Oh, yeah. Parts of Arizona. Parts. Like what? The mountains of Flagstaff? Well... You know, you go across I-40, and it's always raining up there, but not, you know, in Gallup. So, yeah, I, I, I think so. But Either anyway, way. let's get right into his question. Uh, it's a great question. When someone who's new comes to Drone You, they normally ask this question as well. How can I get into uh, getting into drones, but I want to mm-hmm. build up my confidence so I feel secure when I buy that Phantom 3, when I buy that Phantom 4, the unique, whatever they're buying, they want to be more confident. Right. Um, you can go the simulator route. Uh, some of them are free, and some of them are very expensive. Uh, for me, though, I would say you may want to just buy a small drone. In fact, one of the drones that we recommend here in the office to all of our office members yep. is the Sima X5C. Why? You can get it on Amazon. We'll give you the link uh, in the description below. But because you can get a couple batteries with it and a charger, you know, the batteries only last like three, four minutes, but you can get mm. all of that for $60. Right. And it's a good deal. Yeah, it is. There's no GPS. There's mm. no level stabilization. So you do really get a more difficult flying experience than a Phantom, than a Unique, than mm. a Solo, um, than an Inspire. Uh, and it's going to allow you to crash many times. I mean, Indeed. Rob knows this very <laughs> well. So the first time I flew a drone was with you, right? And it was the Phantom, I think the two, mm-hmm. right? And I didn't probably do real well. <laughs> I don't yeah, you did fine. <laughs> okay, I did fine. Anyways, Except landing, for that landing. landing it got a little <laughs> bit rough. But I hadn't flown anything else prior to that. So yeah. then we went out and got a Sima, and I flew that quite a bit around the house and so forth. And it was amazing just how confident I felt after, felt after flying the Sima that flying a solar or whatever in terms of taking off, landing, all that stuff, it just wasn't that big of a deal anymore. It's probably a lot easier too, right? Exactly. No, definitely a lot easier. But just in terms of being comfortable with flying it, it was night and day. 
because of that $60 SIMA. Yeah, so now make sure you don't pull out your SIMA on an airplane and fly it around. You may not get a positive reaction. Um, <laughs> <but> Good tip. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, there are many places you can fly your SIMA, and indoors is normally where you do it. So yeah. um, uh, that's, you know, really useful information, Rob. So well, in the SIMA, one of the things I like about it is it's great for learning, like, orientation because, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm old. Uh, I don't know what it is. Bald. But maybe it's baldness. I don't know. <laughs> Orientation is, was thinking hard. Yeah. And so the Sima is a great way, because like you said, you can crash that thing all over the place, and it just keeps on going. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've broken a few here at Drone You. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that thing, actually. It's probably um, my favorite drone. It Anyways. is amazing. Uh, there's another little drone that if you're an FPV racer or you want to get into FPV racing and you want a small drone before you buy, say, like the MP230 or the MP180 or any of the uh, racing drones that are out there, you can get the blade in Doctrix. Is that right, Sam? You also have to get the third party demo. Gotcha. So the blade in Doctrix. In Doctrix. In Doctrix. In Doctrix. Yep. Thank I don't know you. how to spell it. Don't ask me. <laughs> uh, but if you do buy a third party camera, like a CCD camera, like a FPV racing mm -hmm. camera, you can install that on there. You can also install a little antenna. And, I mean, John Casey, our FPV trainer, was just flying one around the office, just cool. doing laps, like, no yeah. big deal. <laughs> so <laughs> Well, he sat in here, right? Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you want to take the little drone to the next level and make it FPV ready, mm -hmm. um, you can definitely do it with that Blade drone. Now, go ahead. I was going to say, there are, so we brought up that one in the SIMA, but there are tons of these options out there. And I know... When we've mentioned the SIMA in the past, other people have said, well, I really like such and such, and that's cool. I mean, people are going to have different opinions. The point is, fly something that you can crash and yes. get comfortable with. Is there something that they should look for in one of these little drones in terms of, I don't know, like the way the controller works or the way that the drone is set up with the controller? Is there anything that people need to care about when they're buying one of these? Um, hmm, that's kind of hard to say because the whole idea about this thing is that you know, you're know you going to crash it over and over again. Right. So you want something reliable. I mean, that's why we, we mentioned the SIMA because if anything breaks on the SIMA, you know, the motor costs, I think, $2, and to re <laughs> really re cheap. replace it is a joke. So, yeah. um, I mean, it, it's something that you can crash 100 times and not have an issue. You know, you can get a Dromeda, and you can get a Blade. There's a bunch of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we mentioned the Sima as an example purely for the fact that we know that you can beat it up, and it's going to take it. Yeah, and there are probably others that are like it. He mentions, uh, Alan mentions the Hubson, which I'm not familiar with necessarily. I see it here on the Amazon. Hubson X4. I bought that for my nephews. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that, so. that's a lot of fun. Actually, during my first NAB, we were flying that around the main concierge like yeah. room. It was a lot of fun. Cool. So. Yeah, so really any of these, you can get used to just how it feels the orientation, turning it, yawing, and all that kind of stuff. Totally, totally. Now, if you don't want to buy a drone, you want to get right into real flight simulators or flight simulators for that. Um, there are a multitude of flight simulators available. Uh, n the number one that I keep hearing about is the FMS. That stands for Flying Model Simulator, which has model airplanes on it. Are these PC-based simulators? Is that uh, most of them are, yes. Okay. Some of them are Mac-based as well, like things like Liftoff is a Mac-based app, uh, Quadcopter FX, Mac-based. Um, but, you know, with Flying Model Simulator and Real Flight 7 and Phoenix Simulator, all of those simulators, you can actually plug a Tyrannus radio okay. into your computer, Cool. and you'll be flying like as if it were you know, your FPV racer or mm -hmm. whatever you're flying. Um, Tyrannus radios are really used by the FPV racing community. Uh, they're also used kind of by modelers of all ages. When I've seen bigger drones, though, I've seen a lot of people using Futaba mm -hmm. over the Tyrannus stuff because of distance and reliability and a couple other things. But Tyrannus is the ultimate custom. It's the most flexible. I mean, right. you can program it to do just about anything. But does that really make sense to use a simulator, even a free one or $20 one, and then buy it? What is a, what is a Tyrannus going to cost? Anywhere from 180 to 300 bucks. So you might as well buy a drone. That's right. my point. Yeah, yeah, unless you're planning on going into FPV racing because you'd have to buy the Tyrannus True. anyway. True. You could buy the Tyrannus and then get uh, FMS, Real Flight 7, or Phoenix, right. tie your remote right into the computer, and fly away. Now, for me, I like more of the real flying experience. 
even if it is inside of this room that you're seeing us on uh, on in the video camera. In. But on. in on, <laughs> on in. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm more of the the real experience guy. Yeah. So and I think probably most people are. I don't think people are getting interested in drones so they can go sit at a computer. Yeah, that's not really the fun of it. But can you, I don't know, maybe you know, Sam, can you get a simulator like for the Xbox or the P4 or anything like that that already has the controller and practice that So way? the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 3 have a simulator built into the app itself. Okay. So you can actually like fire up the remote, plug in your iPad, and go for a little flight without even leaving your chair okay. at the office. That's, that's cool. with any, you know, DJI, uh, again, the Phantom 4, Phantom 3, so... Which, that's cool, I guess, but it's just kind of hard to think about having a phantom sitting right there and you're just simulating it. Instead I would of drive just me flying crazy. it, right? Yeah, it would drive me crazy. <laughs> but um, I guess if you're just getting started, then maybe that would make everyone's sense. Everyone's got to start somewhere, Rob. True. You know? Absolutely. Do you remember when you first started, buddy? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com and upload that question, FPV related whether it's phantom related, whether it's just getting started, or it's all about legalities. And I got to tell you, Rob, we've got a very interesting podcast coming up next week. Mm -hmm. Very excited about that. And I found out that FPV racers are actually going to have to get the Part 107 license in order to continue flying when 107 comes out. And I think that's going to raise a lot of a lot of red flags. Now, know? is that a definitive thing, or that's just kind of what you're hearing at this point? Oh, uh, no, I can't heard... can't be definitive, because we haven't seen it, but... Well, I heard it, mm -hmm. and then I called Mr. J. Rep, John mm -hmm. Rupert, asked mm -hmm. him, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's true. So, mm -hmm. All right. we're going to have John on to explain that, but when I talked about it with John Casey, he's like, you know, I think it's going to be interesting, because the racing community is a very rebellious community. Exactly. But, <laughs> but, now the IDRA is... Rec it, in order to race for the IDRA, you have to have an FAA registration number, mm -hmm. and every racer I know does not have one. So now people are starting to sign up at the races to have their FAA registration number. Because the IDRA is requiring it. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, and that will ultimately certainly cause people to, to do what they need to do. It's that sanctioning group making them do it. Yeah. Either it, that or they won't race. Or you They're know, gonna have to make or a decision, right? multi GP will take over. You know, there's a couple different racing associations. Sure. So well, by making that move, they are definitely like aligning themselves in a direction. And if for whatever reason the Taylor case comes down and strikes down registration, could it have an effect on IDRA? Could it have an effect on multi GP? We don't know. Yeah, but I would think also that if you've got one of those groups that's sanctioning races and they sort of go anti what the FAA is saying with 107, then that's just going to make them this big target for the FAA. Mm. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. What the FAA says and what the FAA does are two very different things. <laughs> that's, that's, I suppose that's true. <laughs> On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, you found it informative, please leave us a review or share the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.